Welcome to this week's Keratoconus blog. I'm Dr. John Gellies, and this week we're going to be discussing the types of specialty contact lenses that can be utilized for keratoconus patients. Frequently in clinic, I get asked by keratoconic patients, what's the best lens for keratoconus? Well, the best lens is the one that maintains the corneal health while providing good comfort and good vision. And for each individual, that's going to be a different type of lens. There's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all in keratoconus. Experienced and skilled practitioners will customize a design based on your severity and your visual needs to create the best lens for you, the patient. Specialty contact lenses come in a variety of different shapes and materials, and there's six main modalities that are used in keratoconus, and that's gas permeable lenses, keratoconic soft contact lenses, piggyback lens systems, hybrid lenses, scleral lenses, and scleral prosthetic devices. All of these lenses have pros and cons, and we'll go into those right now. Gas permeable lenses, or GPs for short, are historically regarded as the standard of care for individuals with keratoconus. It's a rigid lens material, and this rigid lens is what masks the irregularities in the corneal shape so that we can get crisp, clear, distortion-free vision. These lenses are highly customizable. The pros to these lenses are that they're simple lenses to handle and take care of. They provide good vision and have good durability. When cared for properly, these lenses should last anywhere from one to two years. The downside to these lenses is that initially the lenses may not be very comfortable. And in severe cases of keratoconus, the lens may be unstable on the eye, such as that lower right photo that you see with that lens about to be blinked off of the eye. Many of the keratoconics watching this may relate to that situation. That lens, in that case, is not the ideal lens for that individual. We need to move on to other modalities. And as gas permeable lenses are kind of the mainstay, we're going to be comparing the other modalities back to gas permeable lenses. Keratoconic soft lenses are another modality, and these are made of soft lens material. Now these lenses differ greatly from the mass manufactured standard soft lenses that many of us are familiar with these lenses are about five times as thick and that's what gives a pseudo rigidity to the lenses to mask the irregularities in that corneal shape. These lenses are highly customizable and pending the severity of the disease can give great outcomes for individuals. The pros of these lenses is that they have simple handling and care and they have good initial comfort. The cons is that there's usually a little bit of a vision to comfort compromise. Some individuals find that they're willing to give up a little bit of vision for the comfort that they may get with these keratoconic soft lenses. However, other individuals don't find that the vision is adequate enough and we need to seek other modalities. Now, piggybacked lens systems are the use of a standard soft lens with a rigid gas permeable lens resting over the top. It's a two lens system. The pros on this compared to a gas permeable lens alone is that it's going to provide improved initial comfort because the soft lens underneath the gas permeable lens acts as a cushion to the hard lens. Now we can have a little bit of fun with these lenses. As you can see in the bottom right photo, we've used a prosthetic painted iris lens to be able to improve the eye's cosmetic appearance due to scarring from keratoconus and also 
to be able to improve the visual outcome by providing a artificial pupil size so that this patient experiences less glare and halo and other visual disturbances. The downside to these lenses is that there's a perceived difficulty in handling the lenses and caring for the lenses because there are two lenses. Patients, when I bring this up, typically say, oh no, now I have to take care of two lenses? Well, usually it's actually not that cumbersome. In most cases, we can use the same hydrogen peroxide-based cleaning system for both the hard and the soft lenses. And in some cases, the soft lens below the hard lens can be a daily disposable lens, which requires no care at all. The other issue with these lenses that can happen is that just like gas permeable lenses, when the disease gets extremely severe, the stability of the lens becomes inadequate and we may have problems with blinking this lens off of the eye and disrupting the visual system. Another modality are hybrid lenses. Hybrid lenses are a combination of hard and soft materials. They have a rigid gas permeable center with a soft material skirt on the edge of the lens. And what this does is provide the vision of a gas permeable lens while providing the comfort and the stability of a soft lens. The pros of this are that we really have better consistency and improved vision and comfort because of the stability as compared to a gas permeable lens. The downside to these lenses is that these lenses, because they do vault to the cornea, meaning that there is a space between the back of the lens and the front of the cornea, these lenses need to be filled with a sterile, non-preserved saline solution. And when we place this on the eye, we need to make sure that we don't spill any of that saline out of the lens because it needs to maintain that small, or rather occupy, that small space between the back of the lens and the front of the cornea. Otherwise, we get bubbles, and those bubbles disrupt the vision and cause complications and irritation to the eye. So there is a little more complexity in the handling of these lenses as compared to gas permeable lenses. Now scleral contact lenses are large diameter gas permeable lenses. These lenses can range anywhere from 14 millimeters all the way up to 24 millimeters in diameter. These lenses fully vault the corneal surface making the entire weight of the lens rest on the white of the eye, or the sclera, which is where the lenses get their name. These lenses are highly customizable, and these lenses can improve comfort and lens stability as compared to other modalities of contact lenses for keratoconus. This can be a great option when all else has failed. So for the very, very advanced cases, the extreme severe cases, this can be utilized effectively. The lens also has therapeutic indications for individuals with severe ocular surface disease or severe dry eye. And it can be used to help heal the ocular surface because of that liquid reservoir, or rather that non-preserved saline that is present underneath the lens. Now again, just like the hybrid lens, these lenses have increased complexity when it comes to handling. When we put the lens on, we need to maintain that fluid in the back of the lens. Otherwise, we'll get bubbles underneath the lens, which will cause problems with the vision as well as the comfort. The last modality that we'll discuss are scleral prosthetic devices. These devices are similar to scleral lenses in that they're large diameter gas permeable material that's made to fully vault the corneal surface. 
These lenses are manufactured differently, however, in a process of impression molding, 3D rendering, and then lathe cutting. These devices are able to overcome the most complex geometry in the most extreme cases. The pros of these lenses are that you get an exact fit and success when all other options have failed. They're able to incorporate highly customized optics into the lenses because of their stability. And in some cases, you're able to have a faster fitting time. The downside to these lenses is that like hybrid lenses and traditional scleral lenses, these lenses must be filled with sterile non-preserved saline, which can increase the complexity in lens handling. However, with time, it must be noted that this will become second nature to aware of these types of lenses, whether it's a hybrid, a scleral, or a scleral prosthetic device. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time. Join us next week for another edition of our Keratoconus blog.